Welcome to the fascinating world of semiconductors, where relentless innovation shapes the future of technology. However, as stakes and complexities of innovation rise, so do the challenges. Join us as we uncover the pivotal drivers and obstacles of effective R&D in semicon and high-tech manufacturing. Semicon is indeed one of the most R&D intensive industries, with semicon companies in Europe reinvesting almost 15% of their revenue in R&D, so the stakes are high. Semicon has become a true innovation engine for the Netherlands, representing almost a third of total R&D investments. R&D is really where the magic happens, and this magic doesn't just impact the semicon industry. It also creates tremendous opportunities and spillover effects for adjacent high-tech and mid-tech markets, such as medtech, defense and automotive. But R&D and innovation do not come easily. It's extremely difficult to get it right. So next to all the exciting stuff, you also need to think about making coherent and consistent choices in full transparency. As history has shown, wrong decisions, bad timing, ineffective spending may have dire consequences. As we have seen with AI now, um, some of the incumbents are losing out and are struggling to keep up. To further explore the opportunities and challenges in innovation, we sat down with two Dutch champions in the Semicon ecosystem, New Ways and Nearfield. My name is Ahmed Sadegian. I'm co-founder and CEO of Nearfield Instruments. We deliver solutions, equipment for uh, microchip industries. Yeah, I'm uh, Hans Butker, CEO of uh, New Ways since uh, 2022. We design and produce electronic modules, and we industrialize them and we produce them all over the world. Semiconductor industries work based on technology advancements. It's extremely deep tech, very challenging in terms of technology. It's at the edge of what is possible and is extremely capital intensive. To stay ahead of the curve and ensure long-term value creation, it's not just about technology. It also involves getting a grip on many other aspects of the business. Innovation, it's tech-powered and human-led. So first, it's about making critical choices where to innovate. So having a clear roadmap and portfolio that balances both short-term and long-term. And these choices are not static. This fast-pacing industry requires a continuous recalibration, like now with the adoption of AI. And it's not just about product innovation. Successful companies also prioritize process innovation. So excelling not only in what you innovate, but also how you innovate. It doesn't start with R&D. Unlike is being said, and unlike a lot of you know uh, starts up are you know first talking about R&D. For us, is the other way around. We start with market. We start with customer. If you want to bring a new solution to this industry, you have to understand the needs of the customer. Not only today but also in upcoming decades. Because the cost of adopting a new technology in semiconductor in industry is extremely high. Most of the time, our key customers are focusing on, their, let's say, their first research. So they have distinguished technologies. But pretty uh, fast uh, after that, uh, let's say suppliers like New Ways come in with, let's say, uh, early supplier involvement to help them with their design. Approximately 20% of our workforce is engineering, so about uh, five, 500 uh, well-skilled uh, engineers. Uh, focusing on, on the design part, uh, obviously quite important, together with customers, focusing on industrialization, but also focusing on repair more and more. Innovation happens increasingly in close collaboration with the customer. As emphasized by Hans and Ahmed, this requires a full alignment of teams and processes at both sides and at all levels. Innovation is not a one-dimensional endeavor. It is an ecosystem play and it involves building your own team, deciding with whom to partner for what, and also leveraging the triple helix model, which is about teaming up with universities and knowledge institutes. It's all about what you add as a value to customers. It's about building the credit as well, which is delivering on your commitment to this industry. We don't do that alone, we do it in an uh, innovation ecosystem. A good ecosystem is the driver for success, uh, whether that it's, uh, let's say, a big customer or a smaller customer uh, or universities or institutes. We're trying to connect the dots uh, there and uh, because you cannot do anything alone anymore. But more importantly even is the, the industrialization of it. Uh, often you see that customers do their kind of prototyping and then it needs to be industrialized. And we are able to do that. 
As for example, we are buying thousands of components for Nearfield and we assemble them to, let's say, one big module and then we ship it to our end customer. Invention is one thing, developing the product, high-tech, deep-tech product is another thing. The cycle of innovation will only be completed when customers use that product or solutions. A critical step in the cycle is to bring the prototype to a commercially viable product. And as noted by Hans and Hamid, this requires a stable and affordable product that addresses market needs. Next to the what and the how you innovate, it's also about where you innovate. And multiple factors influence this footprint strategy. Customer preferences, talent availability, cost and tax incentives, and geopolitics. For our customers, it's important that we expand our global footprint. Sometimes customers do want to develop their products close to their, let's say, home. Sometimes affordability is important, that we, we need to go to lower cost. And sometimes also proximity, for example, in Asia is important. That's one of the reasons that we are expanding our footprint in, uh, in Asia. We have also invested in a facility around repair solutions. So more and more customers are asking us to take components back, either repair them or harvest them. And that's, that's one of the, the, the big drivers also for us for the, for the future. Both sustainability and margin goals are propelling new and future-proof revenue models. We call that business model reinvention. For example, OEMs and suppliers, they're expanding into repair and reuse as a service. And these services in turn yeah, triggered new innovation around modularity, but still a lot of untapped potential. For effective R&D, you need full transparency, real-time data, and adequate innovation governance, day in, day out, across all of your innovation projects. Are you looking to make a step on any of these areas? Reach out if you want to explore the opportunities for your specific business and how we can support you on your R&D journey.